Hello, and welcome back to Kim Reads. Today, we be, we continue with Among the Hidden. Chapter 5 Luke ate every meal after that on the bottom step. It became a habit, but a hated one. He had never noticed before, but Mother often spoke too softly to be heard from any distance, and Matthew and Mark always made nasty comments under their breath. So they would start laughing, often at Luke's expense, and he couldn't defend himself because he didn't know what they had said. He couldn't even hear Mother saying, Now be nice, boys. After a week or two, a lot of time, he didn't even try to listen to the rest of the family's conversations. But he was curious the hot July day when the letter arrived about the pigs. Matthew brought the mail in that day from the mailbox at the crossroads a mile away. Luke had never seen them, of course, but Matthew and Mark had told him there were three mailboxes there, one for each of the families that lived on their road. Usually the governor's mail was just bills or thin envelopes carrying curt orders from the government about how much corn to plant, which fertilizer to use, and where to take their crop when it was harvested. A letter from a relative was caused to celebrate, and Mother always dropped whatever she was doing and sat down to open it with trembling hands, calling out at intervals, Oh, Aunt Effie's in the hospital again. Or, Tsk, Liz was going to marry that fellow after all. Luke almost felt he knew his relatives, though they lived hundreds of miles away, and of course they didn't even know he existed. The letters Mother wrote back painstakingly late at night when she saved up enough money for a stamp contained plenty of news, of Matthew and Mark, but never once mentioned Luke's name. The letter was as thick as some from Luke's grandmother, but it bore an official seal. And then the return address was embossed, Department of Human Habitation, Environmental Standards Division. Matthew held the letter at arm's length, the way Luke had seen him hold dead baby pigs when they had to be carried out of the barn. Dad looked worried the minute he saw the letter in Matthew's hand. Matthew put the letter down beside Dad's silverware. Dad sighed. Can't be anything but bad news, Dad said. No use ruin a good meal. It can wait. He went back to eating chicken and dumplings. Only after his last belch did he turn the envelope over and run a dirt-rimmed fingernail underneath the flap. He unfolded the letter. It has come to our attention... He read aloud. Well, so far I understand it. And then he read silently for a while while calling out at intervals, Mother, what's awful? And where's the dictionary? Matthew looked up reciprocity. Finally, he threw down the whole thick pack and proclaimed, They're going to make us get rid of our hogs. What? Matthew asked. More serious than Mark, he had talked for as long as anyone could remember about. When I get my own farm, it'll be all hogs. I'll make the government let me do that somehow. Now he looked over Dad's shoulders. You mean they're just going to make us sell us a lot at a time, right? But then we can build the herd back up. Nope, Dad said. These people in them fancy news houses won't be able to stand the pig smell. But we can't raise hogs no more. He threw the letter out in the center of the table for all to see. Well, what they expect building next to a farm. From his seat to the stairs, Luke had to hold himself going back to fish the edge of the letter out of the chicken gravy and look for himself. They can't do that, can they? he asked. Nobody answered. Nobody needed to. Luke felt like a fool for asking as soon as the words were out of his mouth. For once, he was glad of his hiding place. Mother twisted a dish rag in her hand. Those hogs are our bread and butter, she said. With grain prices the way they are. What are we going to live on? Dad just looked at her, and after a moment, so did Matthew and Mark. Luke didn't know why. Chapter 6 The tax bill arrived two weeks later, the day that Dad, Matthew, and Mark loaded the hogs onto the livestock trailer and took them all away. 
Most were going to the slaughterhouse. The ones too young and too small to bring in a decent price were going to an auction for feeder pigs. Luke watched through the vent at the front of the house as Dad drove by in the battered pickup with each load. Matthew and Mark sat in the back of the pickup, making sure the trailer stayed hitched right. Even three stories up, Luke could see Matthew's hangdog expression. That's when the three of them came to the house for dinner after washing the last of the hog smell off their hands in the mudroom. Dad handed Mother the tax bill without comment. She put down the wooden spoon she'd been using to stir the stew and unfold the letter. Then she dropped it. What? Why, that's... She seemed to be doing the math in her head as she bent to retrieve it. That's three, three times what it usually is. There must be some mistake. Dad shook his head. No, no mistake. I talked to Willeker at the auction. The Willikers were their nearest neighbors with a house three miles down the road. Luke always pictured them with monster scalers and fierce claws because of the numerous times he had been cautioned, you don't want the Willikers to see you. Dad went on, Willikers says they raised everyone's taxes because of them fancy houses. Makes our land worth more. Well, isn't that good? Luke asked eagerly. It was strange. He should hate the new houses for replacing his woods and forcing him to stay indoors. But then he'd half fallen in love with them, having watched every foundation poured, every wooden skeleton of walls and roofs raised to the sky. There was main entertainment, aside from talking to Mother when she came upstairs for what she called My Luke Breaks. Sometimes she pretended his room needed cleaning as badly as the bread needed baking and or the garden needed weeding. Sometimes she just sat and talked. Dad was shaking his head in disgust over Luke's question. No, it's only good for selling, and we ain't. All it means for us is that government thinks they can get more money out of us. Matthew slumped out of his chair at the table. How are we going to pay, he asked. That's more than we got for all the hogs, and that was supposed to carry us through a long time. Dad didn't answer. Even Mark, who normally had a smart aleck come back for everything, was stupefied. M Mother went back to her stew. I got my work permit today, she said. The factory's hiring. If I get on there, I can maybe get an allowance on my paycheck. Luke's jaw dropped. Y you can't go to work, he said. Who will... He wanted to stay. Who will stay with me? Who I talk to all day when everyone else is outside. But that seemed too selfish. Luke looked around. No one else looked surprised by Mother's news. He shut his mouth. Okay, and that's the end of that. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.